as you can see, I've got the best clothes on because I reckon I've got one of the you beaut best jobs that us beekeepers love. Trying to get the bloody wax out of the blooming brood comb, out of the blooming some of the hives that didn't make it through, and some of the hives that we've sort of just taken the old frames out of. Anyway, the lovely wife has commanded that she wants some more wax for her beauty products. I've been doing this bloody wax cleaning up job, and it's most annoying. I've poured the shit through a hessian sack. I've scooped it off with a bucket. I stole the wife's spaghetti strainer to try and get the bloody wax off the top. <laughs> you do not want to see that, and I'm not showing it because I'm going to get in serious shit. That's in this shed somewhere hidden, but actually I think I threw it in the bin, so I better go and buy her another one if she sees this video. Oh, shit. Shit, I better write myself a shopping list of all the shit I need to replace before she sees the show. <laughs> it's not really fair, because most of the time I'd buy her shit and she didn't know, but now I've got video evidence since there's a whole world on her team. Ah, oh, do you know what? I do love the lass, actually. She's most gracious. Anyway, sorry, I digress. I've done the pour through the hessian sack. I've done the scoop off with a spaghetti strainer. I've done the bloody... Here, what's the other crazy shit they did? Anyway, lots of crazy ideas to try and get the wax separated from all the muck that's in the wax. Now, if you're a beekeeper, you know what I'm talking about. So I've come up with this other idea that I'm going to show you today. I went to the woodwork shop and I got him to put me a tap in the bottom of my big kick-ass saucepan. So this idea worked reasonably well. We have the, you have the saucepan with some water in it. So as you, some of the shit settles at the bottom and you get all the muck floating on the top and then you get the wax in the middle when it settles out. But the problem is, because it's a bit a bit excitable, the jolly tap gets blocked up with some of the bigger bits of crap. Cause they're like, once the wax gets down to a certain level, then that starts flowing out. And so then you've got to undo your little bloody bend and poke a stick in here, which is rather fun cause it's bloody boiling hot wax in there. So it can get a bit interesting. So I thought, yes, I had a concept that I'm going to show you. I figure what I really need is some way to keep the shit up the top a little bit. So my first thought, I was thinking, oh, the height of recycling, I'll get me up one of these old metal screen excluders. Ah, queen excluders. <laughs> Could be a wax excluder at this job. Anyway, and I thought, well, I'll sit that up. I'll put that in there. Then of course, if you come up here, you can see this bloody great gaps everywhere. And I thought, well, that's not going to bloody my bunch chop, is it? It would have been, it would have been in Bush Bee Man style to be the height of recycling. But anyway, that's not going to happen. So I had to bugger that off. So I've been looking around in my very tidy shed, seeing if I could, oh, look at that, it's tried to rain. <laughs> seeing if I could actually find a little bit of weld mesh to stick in my pot. But that wasn't going to happen, so over to the hardware store. But it's going to take a little bit more fixing than I envisaged. I got some little bit of light ass chicken wire. I guess that's chicken wire, is it? I don't know, what does it say here? It says it's mini mesh. We've got some mini mesh. Look at that, scope. Anyway, but I'm thinking it's going to be a bit flumpy donk. So we're going to have to make a little stand for it to sit on. I was just reading the directions. Mini mesh says it's to keep your chickens safe and your rabbits safe. And it also has on here, there's a grate, which is what I'm doing with it. So it's even got the leaf on there. That could be beeswax instead of a leaf. But anyway, as I was saying, we got this on the, in the pot. Just as well as bloke measured it. Look at that, that was within a puff deep. Not that I didn't measure it. <laughs> I think it might be a little bit weak. So we have to make a stand. We're gonna find a little bit of inch pipe, hopefully. I had some inch pipe here somewhere. Oh, there we are, behind the man. Oh, yo. So I've got me a little bit of pipe. Pa -da, pa -da. Now. So my plan is, if I make a bit of a rough, obviously this has got to go in the saucepan, folks, so don't get too excited. And I thought, well, I'll cut some little, little legs to lift it up above the plug hole. Otherwise, it'd be a bit pointless if it wasn't above the plug hole. But one would think around here somewhere, a bloke has some legs, but I don't know where they are. So hmm, this might be a bit of a Boy Scout adventure or an Easter egg hunt, depending on your age group. So let's just go for a bit of a wander around the scrapyard, which is my backyard, a bit further away. We should show you my wife's backyard, the part that she's in charge of, how fucking neat and beautiful she's got that. She's extra-sized me from her backyard. She's made it gorgeous. I've even been kicked out. You are, on our travels, I'll show you the fact that I've been removed and 
Actually, today we might actually take the drums out of there as well and make her smile when she gets home. <laughs> so anyway, come for a wander. You want to see how neat the wife's yard is? Look at this. See? Tell you what. She's putting me to shame. If you remember, this was the spray booth. I had myself set up in here so I could spray me bee boxes and get stuff organised. I had a self-cleaning floor, which I thought was pretty amazing. But anyway, I've been removed. I've been removed from the bloody spray booth. She says, off you go, Bush Bee Man. Get your own shit organised. But she's got this yard looks gorgeous. I must admit, she's planted some flowers. So check this shit out. This is where my spray booth was. This is how pro this is the protest. Look. So we've got a peach tree. <laughs> and then she's gone and planted this gorgeous tree right in the middle of my spray booth. Look at that. So she's got little flowers and some cool little loops. I don't know what they are, but anyway, and some boss rock. So once upon a time I used to be able to spray my bee boxes in this section, but I have a sneaking suspicion that this was an act of protest, my love, and good on you for getting me out. Anyway. We're going to move those drums later because she's been asking me for about the last. Well, I don't know. Bloody too long. Anyway, I digress. Let's go and find these legs. Now, for all you lovely ladies out there that are cheering on the Bush Bee Man's wife, I'm not a completely useless husband and I'm not a complete self absorbed individual, but I'm close. But anyway, she asked me to make her something cool, so I've made her a barbed wire bird's nest to add to the aesthetics of a gorgeous new garden that I've been excommunicated from so I can actually look at it from the opposite side of the fence where I'm allowed to be. But check that shit out, I thought I did a good job. I didn't get too many scratches either. <sighs> right, so, out I get. Out I get. Oh man! Anyway, <laughs> I guess the bit backyard is not meant to be a spray booth anyway, was it? It was fun while it lasted, but anyway, sorry, I digress. We're looking for some legs. Let's go and have a look at where, how the untidy half live. So this is the extended shed mess. This is the not so used shed, because it bloody leaks a bit. Anyway, one day a bloke will catch up. Bloody hell are they? I swear they were in here. This is my dead fish farm. <laughs> that didn't happen. Oh shit, look at that. We could have used that, but it wasn't quite wide enough. <laughs> Hello legs, where are you? Hell, that's a lifetime ago. <laughs> Back in the day when I used to do my weights. <sighs> If you saw a video of me about 30 odd years ago, I was young and handsome. Yeah, I'm just, I don't know, I'm not sure how does that matured. <laughs> anyway, they're not in here, so we're moving right along. Come on, Bloomingdale. I think they call that the disappointed kick when you can't find what you're looking for. It's around here somewhere though. It's by effective story system, that's the trouble. Hey dog, you know where my legs are? They just shook their heads in and said we don't know where anything is. Well instead of playing the Benny Hill music we just thought we'd just cut out the last hour of searching for this crap. Because what happened was I was at an auction and I bought these pieces of angle iron and they had all these little legs on the end of it that I've cut off to use the angle iron for something else. And I swear they're in this yard somewhere. Well, I know I threw them into a pile, but then I've cleaned up. Let's look, I actually cleaned up the recycling the other week, and so. Hey, actually, they might be in here. Here we go, this is what I'm looking for. Ah, oh, look at that. See, I don't even have to make that leg. That'd be all right, wouldn't they? Little legs like that. Hopefully, there's four of them. Probably why you really should have all your stuff in a storage pot. At the farm, I've got all my shit laying in a bucket when I cut off. But anyway, so when you're all right in and tell me I need to tidy shit up, I already know. Okay? Oh, just shut up about it. God, it does. Anyway, my legs, my legs, instant legs. I thought that'll save me a bloody job. 
mind you, I probably could have made them as quick as it's taken us to find the bloody things. Anyway, I'm gonna make these my legs, and then we're gonna make a cross member. Oh, Porsche, it's all right. Yes, I know. You want to be on camera, don't you? Yes, you're famous. A famous dog. Anyway, sorry. Here we go. Back to the construction site. I guess I could go to a bit, my other workbench in the other shed, but that's all covered in sawdust, and I was looking at that thinking, if a bloke goes welding on that bench, he might go up and smoke. <laughs> you know, like given my performance the last few episodes, I might just stay away from burning my own shed down. But if you're wondering, I figure this is the process. I can start here and work my way back through the mess, and then I'll go around the corner and work my way out, out to the mess, and I'll have myself all tidied up by the time winter's finished. That's as long as it's like a two year winter. But anyway, we can live in hope. Moving right along. We're trying to make a stand. So next part of the project is we have to find out how high we want the jolly thing. Anyway, I figure we gotta get a measuring stick. Or for you fancy people, they call it a ruler. I reckon we wanna make the leg about seven millimeters long. So that'll involve some cutting. Anyway, found me jolly pencil. Bloody thing's blunt as normal. So I'm gonna have to get me pocket knife and sharpen the damn thing. Sharpen the pencil. I'll probably have to sharpen the knife and all. Oh, Ow, shit. <laughs> oh, dear. Now, for all you avid fans that have got all organized and had me sharpening my pocket knife with a file or on me window or wherever else I was supposed to sharpen the damn thing, I've lashed out and gone and got myself a little bit of a sharpening ass tool that I can keep in my box. Combo star. Look at that. Not even a sponsor. Anyway, it's got a little bit of a thing on one side and a little bit of a thing on the other side, so you can just go. I tell you, I thought, oh, I thought that that was pretty bloody clever. Not everybody would agree with me, but it works a bit better than the window idea. <laughs> that little neat little piece of machinery was in the bottom of my wife's utensil drawer, so. Don't tell her I've got it, because she doesn't even know she owned it, but now it's mine, because possession is nine-tenths of the law, apparently. <laughs> right, on to the measuring. Oh, back scratcher, back scratcher. Nothing else that makes a bloody good back scratcher. I'll be a bit like Peter Griffin, but I think he was selling butt scratchers, so I'm not filming that. Anyway, moving on, we better measure our legs. Now, high-tech bloody workbench, which is... Shit, now what did I say? Seven mils, wasn't it? Of course, we're going to need somewhere to cut this jolly thing. Being that my bloomin' drop hacksaw... No, anyway. <laughs> the drop saw that cuts shit in a nice straight line is out at the farm and... Apparently we haven't got time to drive out there and get it, so we're just going to have to do it on the run. Here we go! So... You'd be surprised to know that I'm actually going to put some safety glasses on. <laughs> well, being we haven't got a lot of these to spare, we might just double check that. I think that's going to work pretty good. Now just a little handy hint for all you construction experts out there. If you're going to be rough and reuse your first stick, just put a mark on it and always use that one to measure every one other one. Otherwise you'll be going along and you'll eventually, if you're doing hundreds of them, eventually when you get to the end you've got the things out by, what well, you know, I knew the length of the pencil mark. Anyway, well, hopefully they're all sort of square. Not that it's really that important for this project. Now the next thing I want to do, just to make it a bit more reinforced, I want to cut a little divot. So is that that can sit in there. So I just want to cut that one face out. So anyway, we're just going to mark these up. The next fun thing will be to find the bloody welder, won't it? Not really sure if they ever taught you this is metal work, but anyway. All we want to do is we want to cut down either side here. And then hopefully we can snap that little bit out. But we'll find out in a minute. Where the hell am I going to put that so I don't cut my hand off? 
But anyway, if you're watching this, I obviously didn't cut my finger off or we'll be in hospital. And we're just going to snap that bit out of there. Tidy that up a bit, I've gone a bit off, gone a bit off centre. I reckon they might call that a fail in metalwork class. But anyway, won't be long and we're all covered in wax and no one will know. Well, you'll all know, but still. <laughs> I don't even know what stage we're up to, but anyway, that's that bit done. <laughs> now we're going to make our cross member. Be interested in how wide that's going to be. Now, of course, the bottom of the saucepan's a bit beveled, so it's probably going to. Well, anyway, we'll come in a little bit and then we'll. Yeah, we'll redo it <laughs> when we get it right. Little bit, little bit, little bit more. Little bit more. That looks pretty good to me. Right, and we need the cross. We're going to go that way as well. Obviously, less the middle bar. Nah, screw it. We'll weld this bit up first. Of course, this construction job would probably be easier if a bloke had a level bench, but. As I said earlier, you can't have a level bench if it's covered in sawdust, so here we are in the makeshift end of town. Do you reckon your bench is leveled anyway? No. Nah. Well, it's leveler than this table. I don't know where I even got this table, somewhere. Anyway, we'll go and get the welder and see if we can weld this shit together. Hopefully. What did you say? <laughs> You're inclined not to do stupid things? Well, you probably were until you start hanging around with me. But anyway, that's the first little bit. We'll tidy all this up in a minute. My silly bloomin' welder is a bit... Anyway, it's a bit... What does it say? It doesn't say Jurassic, but it might as well be. A bit like you. <laughs> ha, ha, ha. You behave. Nice welds. No, they're not. It welded, that's all. We're going to get the proper one, but it can't be fucked. Anyway, if you're brave enough to be making this at home, you've got to allow for this bit of pipe, which is two centimetres wide. So obviously this length we're about to cut has got to be two centimetres shorter than this one. So whatever size you're actually doing in your saucepan or pot or whatever you're making this in, you've got to make this one less the width of whatever bar you're using. In this case, we're using two centimetre bar. So anyway, very informal we are here. It should be around about there. Now before you cut the bloody thing, measure both ends. Right, measure from the other end just to make sure it is in the middle. Like measure from your middle bit back to the ends. Well there's been more than one time in my little calculated life that I've put it in the wrong spot. So there's a little trick to put in your toolbox. Oh, look at us go! That's bloody gonna be perfect! Goodness me, Mr. Wiggly would not be impressed. That's me woodwork, I mean metalwork teacher from school. Poor old Mr. Wiggly. I wonder if he's still alive. If he is, apologies, it's not your fault that I'm being a ruffian. <whistles> rough, 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 Mr. Bush being in. Gonna do the job for what we want. I hope. <laughs> It'll suck after all this effort if it's no good, won't it? 
That's looking pretty bloody good, I reckon. It's even sort of level. Kind of stable. I think we'll give it all a bit of a tidy up and do the let do a rerun. There's one seam there that's a bit shit. So if you got real excited, you'd roll under here too. If you're making something really strong, like in down there. But don't fucking matter, really. <laughs> We're not making it that. If you're if you're a bit slack and like this doesn't really work out, and you don't make it too welded together, you can cut it apart easier. So then that can go back under the tire for the next project. Anyway, we're just going to put another seam on there, and then we'll be all done. It's a little bit warm. It's gonna be awful warm when it gets hot. Anyway, look at that. Well, at least it saved us making the legs. I reckon that's gonna work pretty good, but... Yeah, well, I don't know. Hopefully it works, otherwise <laughs> we've had a whole lot of exercise for nothing. Anyway, now what we need to do is make the mesh. If you're following along at home, don't touch that, because it's bloody hot. Righty-o, now the next fun part is so we'll see if we can get our mesh the right shape in a past life a bloke would have just got the angle grinder and cut around there and then made a hell of a mess of your saucepan but i'm older and wiser now so i'm going to go and find myself a texter and just go with it that idea hopefully ah, oh, even stored me texter on a safety bench <laughs> hopefully the texter works that'll be good we're just going to draw ourselves a bit of a rough ass circle. I guess if you've got thicker mesh, you wouldn't have to go to all this excitement of making a little stand, but. Well, maybe you would, because. Where the bloody hell do you. Well, you could just bend the mesh over and make it that way, but. Anyway, you do your own thing. I'm going on doing what I'm doing, and you figure it out for yourself. Anyway, this is my plan, so I'm going with this and see whether it works or not. <sighs> Hell, I hope it does work after all this. Well, I suppose if it doesn't really work, it'll just be another epic Bush B-Man fail. That'll probably get on the blooper reel. Hey, if you become a Patreon supporter, you'll get to see the blooper reel. Now, I don't think we've got far to go. We reckon, I reckon we're more than halfway already as far as the finances go. So maybe just click onto the link down here somewhere on this page and consider supporting us. And hell, just don't watch the blooper reel with your kids because that could be a bit complicated. Of course, if you're not all you know, motivated about this Patreon business, you can always nick over to the PayPal link. If you don't like PayPal, perhaps you can email us and we'll give you some bank details and you can just, we've got several people that just automatically transfer some money and they don't have to, I don't know, whatever PayPal charges, I have no clue. But anyway, that's another option. Or if all of those options are way too complicated, click over to the Bush Bee Company website and grab yourself a sticker or 10 and that'll help us too. So options abounding here to support us. Keep the laughs on coming. Now I think I've moved me bloody mesh and me line's all out of crookedness. Is crookedness a word? I don't think it is. On the outside. What was that song? Round the outside, round the outside. Talking about round the outside and the whole controversy about copyright songs. There's one in the episode very early on in the show that you could probably see me sing. Because we were on the radio the other day and the guy wanted to hear me sing because he said apparently I can sing. I can't sing for shit, but he found an episode that had me singing. Ta-da! Clap. Roundy, 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 round. Oh, 
on after you a little bit of nibbling here. Oh, I'm a bit too enthusiastic. <laughs> oh, well, that's a bit typical, isn't it? Anyway, we'll just nibble a bit more off of there. Want it too crazy tight, otherwise it's a pain in the ass. Ta -da! Ta -da! Maybe that one. There's that one little nibble there, I reckon. That's pretty good. Oh, I reckon we're getting there. Nearly there. Lad, that's been a bit of an exercise, hasn't it? I think I'm going to be disappointed if this actually doesn't work. Anyway, there's how you put the bottom in the saucepan. Would they, would they call that a false bottom? I reckon that would be. Anyway, we will see. My thinking is that when you do the wax melting, if you put your water in here to get the wax to melt in it, in the water, wax melting in the water, is that right? Anyway, you put the brood frame in here, and then all the shit floats to the top, and when you normally try to scoop all the crap off the top, that's a real pain in the ass to do. So then, I, like I said, you could tip it over a bag, which is a real pain in the ass. So I've tried that and burnt my blooming foot. That wasn't much chop. So that my plan is that when the water comes down out of that tap, all of the muck won't get in the tap, because that was another drama I had. So hopefully the, the floaty stuff, whatever it's called, all the crap that's in the brood, you know, the little baby bees and bits of pollen and God knows what else is in there. We'll stay up the top and the wax will pour out the bottom and then hopefully we'll end up with some, well, stage one of wax cleaning and then we'll do a stage two. I don't know whether we'll be back in here or whether we, anyway, we'll get to that after this one. Well, I think that's been a fairly successful little project. I've still got all my fingers, so I'm pretty impressed with that idea. Hopefully it works as a separator. But anyway, Come back next episode and we'll see whether it works. Fuck, I hope it does.